so uh, next I'd like to introduce uh, Christian uh, Trebert. I think I've pronounced his wrong, name completely wrongly there, but uh, he's uh, a member of the uh, Bellingcat team. He's um, been doing all kinds of interesting things on open source investigation, and uh, he's going to tell you all about that in applying verification. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's a true pleasure for me standing here today. And I'll only be talking about uh, applying verification. So we've been talking about verification. And I want to show you some examples of how we've been using, for example, geolocation, um, recognizing type of weapons in our investigations. And it will be a combination of very diverse case studies, just to give you an impression what kind of tools we use, what kind of methods we use, and um, what it results into. Now, first of all, I'd like to start with that basically all what we do at Bellingcat, and if I'm talking about we, it's the Bellingcat team, but also many people online. I mean, I know it's really nice for the first time in real life, I've met some people I've been working with online, especially via Twitter right now. There's young guys, 21 years old only, that, that are doing great stuff. But all the information we use is open source. Basically, it's accessible to anyone with an internet connection. I think this is the strength. Because it's once someone challenges you and says, well, how did you get this information? You can just point towards the open source information and say, well, you can take the exact same steps as we did, and you can only reach the same conclusion. Now, first of all, it's traditional media, as you can see now on the screen. Um, um, and there's also social media, like Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Also, Snapchat's worth including. Um, I'm, s I'm 26, but I'm starting to get feeling old because I've never used Snapchat until Syrian Rebels started using it, and I needed to make a Snapchat account as well. Um, but this is all open source information, but especially what's also interesting is like Google Maps, known to you all probably, Wikimapia, yeah, but also commercial satellite imagery like Digital Globe and uh, Yandex Maps, Terra Server, and so on. Now, just, just to give you an impression how much open source there is, um, I want to show you something that's not relevant at all, just to show you how much there is. So let's have a look at this guy. He's taking a selfie while he's standing in the Strait of Bosporus in Istanbul, right? And now we were tracing this ship because it may have been transporting weapons from Russia to, Ukraine, uh, from Russia to Syria. But there's nothing to see on this photo. Now the interesting thing is, while he is taking this picture, he may not be aware that somewhere in the background there is maybe a ship spotter filming the same ship. So let's have a look at this video. And what we see here is a ship that was being tracked, filmed by a film spotter in Istanbul. Now have a look who's standing there on the deck. Now, if we zoom in in that video, we can see that the exact time when the photograph was taken, he's also being filmed. Just to give you an impression, if you know where to look, if you look carefully, you'll be able to find from incidents different bits of information from different sources, but actually showing the same, well, event. And in this case, it shows you, even when we probably all go out tonight in uh, Warsaw, go out of this building, you may get photographed from different sites. And that's what we do at Bellingcat most of the time. So we're trying to get as much open source information about one event. Now, one of the su such events was uh, is the conflict in, in Ukraine. And the interesting thing is that it was not hard to find evidence that Russia was denying any military involvement in eastern Ukraine. Now, okay, these are the headlines. The thing is, on the American side, in Congress, I mean, evidence was also... Well, sorry for my language, but pretty shit, because let's, let's have a look and, at this. And uh, just to demonstrate this, I brought back, and it's, it's not a very fun thing to look at, but you have to understand what's happening there. Show the tank, uh, hold up the tank one first. These are, Madam President, these are T-72 tanks. Now, Putin keeps saying we don't have any Russians in there with the separatists. It's not us. We're not doing it. Look, here they are. This is the pictures we brought back with us. Those are the tanks that are all lined up, all of that within, uh, within that area of, uh, of Ukraine. And, and clearly, that's, that's what they are. Now, if now, clearly, that's what they are. For any, who's using reverse image search here? I mean, this is just the simplest verification tool you can use. And if you don't use it, you should. Any kind of image you find online. If you would reverse image search, the images we see here presented on the screen as proof that Russia is sending military vehicles into eastern Ukraine, we can see those images. For example, the one on the bottom is actually from uh, a different conflict, Russia and Georgia. I mean, these are tanks entering uh, South Ossetia. I mean, it is a conflict, but it has nothing to do with Ukraine. If you look at the other picture on the screen, we can see the exact same thing. 
here's a picture, and we can just find it back in, I think, what is the AP photo database or whatsoever. And we can see the exact same picture being presented as military vehicles entering Ukraine, but they're actually entering Georgia year, years earlier. So what we thought at Bellingcat is thought, okay, this evidence we cannot really prove anything with, so what's going on? So we started collecting all the open source information, photos and videos of military vehicles traveling in this border area, both on the Russian side of the border and the Ukrainian side of the border, to see whether we could establish whether we're actually crossing the border. So um, crowdsourcing is very important in this. Everybody can join this project. And videos are being uploaded, as you can see here, in a, in a platform we call CheckDesk. It's called Check Now. Um, and um, you can see Eric, my colleague, who will be talking later as well, he is like posting a video, he's saying it may be here and so on, people are start commenting on it in progress. Um, and eventually um, we end up with this database of, as you can see on the screen, um, the group, the date, the month, the geolocation and so on. Basically a whole database of military vehicles, uh, both in Russia and Ukraine. And the interesting thing is that we had photos of, for example, this uh, military vehicle in the Russian side of the border. But if we would, uh, we could trace it basically, here we see it again in Russia, eventually turning up with a flag of the Donetsk People's Republic in, um, in Ukraine. Um, and here we have the same vehicle again. Just to give you an example, I mean, this is, this is oh, these were examples actually. <laughs> um, but this is a massive database, and obviously we will be talking about in the case of MH17 and hiding in plain sight, this is, this is basically the base of all of it. It's just tracing those military vehicles from one side of the border into the other side of the border. A completely different case study are those guys. Um, a Tunisian activist contacted us and was saying, listen, um, there is Tunisian jihadists uh, who say they're claiming to be in Raqqa, but they're said to be ki ha have been killing uh, Tunisian politicians. Now, the Tunisian government was saying they were under, uh, monitor they're being monitored, and they actually never left Tunisia. Now, who was right here? We, usually, when we start such an investigation, we, we don't really care what is the fact. We're just interested in the fact. So whether the Tunisian government was right or whether these activists or the claim in the video was right, we didn't really care. We just started looking at the visual information. Now, this is a video, and there's not much visible in the video, as you can see. We can see a very large flagpole. We can see the bu buildings on the background. Now, the question is, can we determine where this was taken? I mean, geolocation gets hard. I mean, there's no Eiffel Tower in the background or whatsoever. So if we take a closer look at the video, we, re we replay this segment of the video. We can see there are some buildings in the background, actually. And um, interestingly, if we look at this background, I mean, it's probably on the screens, you can see it better than on the, on the large screens. We can see those buildings in the background. Now, there are not many high buildings in Raqqa. So if we would go to Google Maps, to Yandex Maps, to Wikimapia, and so on, and start looking for large buildings, we can see this building has like two windows, a staircase, and uh, what is it, six, six seven other uh, windows. And... Um, we found this building in Raqqa, and we shift through historical imagery to get the right side of the building. As you can see, this is all not the side we're interested in, the staircase are on the other side. But we're lucky enough to find this historical uh, satellite image, which shows the exact side we're interested in. We can see, indeed, there's two windows, a staircase, and more windows. So now we're trying to look for more visual clues that is indeed the same location. Now, interestingly, if we would... Um, go to the background, we could identify this building as well, which was also visible in the uh, background of the video. Um, but also, if we would go further, um, let me see if this plays, yeah, there it goes. We basically just draw a line of sight from this building to the other building, and just look to the nearest building, which is high, where they could stand upon. And as you can see, all the buildings are really small, very low, and this this one is a right building. So we thought, probably they're standing here, but are there even more visual clues we can find? As you remember, there was this very large flagpole shown in the video, and they were looking at it. Now, if we would look around in this, uh, this building we've identified, we could even shift through historical imagery and see this massive flagpole there, casting this shadow. But also this building here, with the red roof. Now, we thought, okay, this may be the building we see behind the flagpole. Here's a composite image. We can see the flagpole, and you can see a building with a red roof on the background. It's pretty high as well. Now, the thing is, the historical imagery trick, which we did with the other building, doesn't work here. We couldn't see the side of the building. Now, there isn't Google Street View, unfortunately, in Raqqa. But there is something like a kind of beta version, I'd say, of Google Street View, which is um, Panoramio. And Panoramio is basically geotagged photos in every location in the world. And look what we have here. If we go to that building, we are lucky to find a building that was geotagged right next to it. So we have a picture of how the image looks like, how the building looks like from the ground. And if we compare it with the video, we can indeed see it's... Um, 
it's very similar. We have the red window, we have the rectangular windows on top, then the more like key-shaped windows and so on. So we were confident to say they're actually standing in this building in Raqqa. And we could even see the balustrade in the background, which was the same as from the building. Um, so we were able to tell the uh, Tunisian activists, well, the Tunisian government probably has something to worry about because these guys are really in, in Raqqa. They're not in Tunisia anymore, they're in Raqqa. Now, the same trick, basically, and Elliot talked about it earlier, is geolocating ISIS supporters in um, Europe. This was a really interesting campaign. It was by the, by the, by the former, well, we're going to say spokesperson or whatsoever, of the so-called Islamic State, Al-Adnani. He's been killed now, but um, he called upon supporters in the West to show that they're everywhere, they can be behind us, they can be your neighbor, and so on. A campaign of fear. But what was intended to be a campaign of fear basically turned out in a campaign of showing how stupid some of them were. Because they posted those messages on social media, basically saying, I support the Islamic State, and they showed in which they were. And there were a lot of those messages. And uh, let's have a look at this. If we look at, the, he says he's in Deutschland, in Münster, in Germany. What would be the visual clue in this, if you want to geolocate this, anyone? Yeah, the poster, exactly. I mean, he says this in Germany, so it's a good way to start, right? I mean, I'm Dutch, and we always have to joke that Germans are extremely organized. I don't know if there's any Germans here, but Germans are so organized that they have an online map of where advertisement polls are. <laughs> so we just have here a map of Münster, and if we zoom in, we can find all those locations where those advertisement polls are. And uh, then it's just looking for the thing that matches. And we thought this is a good uh, chance that we can see it in the, in, the, in the top corner, right? And if we go through, we thought this is the perspective and we can actually see, we can identify all those visual clues in the picture. Like for example, this fence in the background, we can see it here. Um, there it goes. We can see it in a photo. Um, we can see another one here um, on, the, on the, the stripes on the road. We can see the uh, um, traffic lights and also the bigger traffic light in the background. So this is just one example of geolocating them, how basically a campaign of fear to turn into a campaign of fear for themselves, because obviously law enforcement is interested in such kind of stuff. Um, now I want to end with a very interesting example. I mean, we at Bellingcat, we have often debunked um, information spread by the Russian government or the Russian Ministry of Defense, and we'll be talking about this later a lot. And usually it's not even sometimes that hard to debunk what they're saying. Sometimes they don't even care. Um, so it seems. But I think, as I said in the beginning, it's not important who we're investigating. We're simply interested in investigating the facts, establishing facts, what we can do as normal, regular citizens with open source verification. Now, I think it's even perhaps even more important to do that with my own government or our own governments. Um, and this is a very interesting case because we can see here is a, a statement of the White Helmet saying that Russia bombed a mosque. Now what we do, we use the process, we start collecting all this open source information. And if we would collect all this open source information of this one, we would see um, these kind of images. Now the interesting thing is that first of all, this is allegedly a weapon remnant, that it's in Latin script, and that we're wondering, okay, it would be strange for the Russians to use this kind of ammunition. So when we started to have a closer look at this, and we would cross-reference it with uh, stock pictures of Hellfire missiles used by the US, we would see that the topography is pretty similar. Now, if we would um, even take a closer look, you can see, right, the topography here. Um, compare it with images that were posted earlier by activists and other groups in Syria and of targeted assassination of, for example, groups like Hayat al Um And we would compare those images, we could see that they're identical. The weight is identical, the topography is identical. So we had a clue that this may be not a Russian airstrike, but actually a coalition or a unilateral US airstrike on this building, which was claimed by locals to be a mosque. Now, a few hours later, the um, Pentagon came with a statement, or CENTCOM, can, sorry, CENTCOM came with a statement, indeed admitting they uh, conducted an airstrike on an Al-Qaeda and Syria meeting location, um, killing several terrorists. Now, interestingly, they, they, they uh, said it was in, uh, in Idlib, but we geolocated it again, and it was just across the border in Aleppo government. So I actually emailed the Pentagon, like, did something go wrong? I had several strikes. I said there's miscommunication in between, which is interesting. Um, but we started looking into it more, because who is right? We don't care. Is the Pent Pentagon right, saying that they struck a mosque, uh, didn't struck a mosque, or are locals right that they struck a mosque? So by collecting all this information, including official information by uh, the Pentagon, um, we were able to identify that what the Pentagon said was a mosque on the left side, and they, in, they didn't strike, 
and uh, the building on the right side, which I said was not a mosque, by collecting all this open source information and corroborating it with eyewitness statements and so on, we could firmly say, confidently say, okay, this building that was struck was also a large and functioning mosque. Now, interestingly, we uh, communicate a lot with Human Rights Watch and Forensic Architecture, group of architectures, and we all release our reports. And um, the Pentagon did start an investigation. And while they initially kept on saying this was not a mosque, uh, a few weeks back they had a press conference and they admitted that they were not aware that this big building they struck was a mosque. Now I'm not going into the details here about whether the strike was legal and so on because the Pentagon is saying we would have struck the building anyway. I mean, that's not up to me. As I said, we're just interested in establishing facts. And in this case, we could also establish, well, this was a large and functioning mosque. And, well, let's say it's a bit of hopeful for us as civil society to see that the Pentagon at least started an investigation and admitted they did not put this building on the no-strike list, that they weren't aware there was a mosque. Um, that having said, um, hopefully later on, when we have a little bit more time, we can show you actually how we made a 3D model of all this investigation and put all the open source information in a model. 